we need to implement the following boolean function with an 8 to 1 line multiplexer and a single inverter with variable d as its input. We have f and then we have a, b, c, d and then we have the sum of our min terms to be 2, 4, 6, 9, 10, 11, and 15. Remember that a min term means basically a one value. Now we've done all of these previous problems and all of these previous problems have been leading us to this final moment. This is the end game now. And so when we look at this current problem, we're going to look at the knowledge that we got with this problem 33 with the decoder and the detailed logic diagram. We're going to use the process that we used with this multiplexer in a three two line decoder in an eight by two. And then we're going to also, maybe most importantly, use this decoder that we've um, practiced multiple times to solve for this with our truth table. So coming back down here, we're going to look at the problem carefully. We have an eight to one line multiplexer. So to make our multiplexer, it's going to look like a kind of rectangular box. And then inside of a rectangular box, it's going to be an eight by one, and we'll just write M for multiplex. We have a single inverter with variable D as its input. So we have an inverter, and that's basically like a knot. And we'll look at that in a second. We also have A, B, and C as our inputs. So up here, we are going to have input A, we are going to have input B, and input C. So we can write this as A, B, C, and this is going to come in to be S0, S1, and S2. And then we know that our output is going to be the function, so we'll write F here. And now we need to have our inputs. We have our 8 to 1, so here's our 1, and now we need the 8. So for our 8, I'll actually do it in a slightly different color, and they're going to be labeled D0, or D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, and lastly D7. So now we can look at our min terms making a truth table and see how we're going to write the input for here. In our truth table, we have A, B, C, D. These are four kind of inputs. Variable D has an inverter in front of it, but technically it's still an input. We will have to deal with that specially, but um, for now we're gonna treat it as an input. So we're gonna have our A, B, C, D, and we're gonna have F for the output. Now we need to have all the possible different combinations of our um, inputs in here. So to start this off, we're gonna do 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And we're going to have to do this four times since we have four things. Now for our A and B, we are going to do what we've done previously, and we're just going to write out all of these four times. So we're going to do the zeros, and then we do zero ones, and then we do one zeros, and lastly, we're gonna finish this off with one ones. And so this is what our truth table will look like. When we look at these, we have a lot of indexes here. We'll actually even do an index column, and we can label our indexes going down here. So these are all of our indexes. We can see that we have half of this for our uh, inputs. And so what we're doing is we are going to take this A, B, and C, and we're kind of blocking it off right here. And we're going to do this for all of these down here. However, we're also going to need to block off the D column. And so we're just, we're not blocking it off, we're just looking at it separately. So we're going to have these like this. And now we can start writing our F, our output column. So we're just going to fill in these min terms. And I'll just highlight this in, or underline this in green. That way we know what's up. So for our min terms, we know that we're going to have a one at this index, index two, and we can just point narrow to that. And then we have one at index four, we have one at index six, we have one at index nine, we have one at 10, 11, and 15. 
And so these are all of our Fs. Now our D is with a single inverter as its input. So our D is going to be separate from the A, B, and C right here. And so looking at these columns, we have F here. And well, we know that in here, F is zero, F is zero, F is zero, 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 zero. And now knowing all that, that'll help us out here. So we have this F, right? And in the first part right here, we should actually be doing this in blue because that's what the blue outline is for. F is going to be equal to zero because it's totally zeroed here. We're going to look at this next part where we have this one zero and we can see that our F is totally opposite with this D. So we're going to have that F is equal to D naught. Now we're going to look at this one and then we see that we have the same thing. F is equal to D naught. And then we have the same thing for this one where it's totally opposite. So it's F is equal to D naught. And then we look at this one and they're actually the same. We have zero, zero here, and then we have a one, one here. So we can say that F is equal to D. And F, remember, it's this A, B, and C, and this D is separate. That's why we kind of block them off right here. Next, we have zero, one, and then one, one. So F is one, one here. And with F being one, one, we're just going to say that F is one. Next, we have F is zero, zero here. So it doesn't matter what this is, F, is equal to zero. And now we have zero, zero with our one, one. So F is equal to our D. And now we can fill this in right here. So there are a few things to note. When F is equal to zero, that means something is grounded. Whenever something is zero, it's grounded. So we're going to have to make a ground symbol like this. And then we're going to have to connect the ones that are grounded. So the ones that are grounded are going to be this D zero and we have this D right here which this is D seven so this is D six that means D six is going to be grounded and then all the other ones are not grounded so we're going to leave that alone and we're going to actually we should be doing these in a different color just so we don't get confused but if they're in dark blue they're grounded now we're going to do a light blue and this light blue is for are D naught. So we'll draw out here that we have a D, right? We have some input in here, but it's inverted. So it's going to have to go through this knot right here. And after it goes through a knot, well, we can see that right here, we have knots for all of these. So this D one's a knot, this D two is a knot, and then this D three is a knot. Now the rest of them are not knots, but we do have a D here and a D here. So what we're going to do is we are going to take this D and all we need is the actual input here. It's not going through the knot and we're going to connect it to the last one and that's our D7. So now our D7 has been connected. Also our D right here and this is our D4. So we're going to connect this as well. Lastly, we have this one here. And so this one here is from a voltage power supply, right? Or some, from some voltage source. If we have ground at zero, that means we have source at one. So what we're going to do is we need to make some source. We're going to have V, D, D, because this is source D. And then we are going to have this go into our D5. And so that is the implementation of the Boolean function with an eight to one line multiplexer. We have our eight, and then we have our one here. We have a um, variable D as its input, as well as A, B, and C. So that is this problem.